Hello my fellow nerds, welcome back to my channel. I think you can obviously tell that this is going to be my coming out story. I've been watching several younger people sharing their stories and even coming out to their parents live on video. Coming out is terrifying, I know. If you're considering coming out, you're more than likely feeling as though the world is crushing in on you. You don't know how others will react. You're afraid by listening and watching others' stories that your parents may disown you. You're afraid of it because, sadly, it does happen. The time to come out is when you feel ready to do so. You aren't obligated in any way to share a part of who you are if you feel in the least bit unsafe. I will, however, encourage you to tell those you trust and whom you know will have your back if things go awry. You'll be safe if you create a net to catch you if you fall. That said, I want to let you know that many of the negative stories that we hear are balanced out by the wonderful supportive families out there who love and more than accept their LGBTQ plus children, nephews, nieces, brothers, sisters, and even parents. Maybe your family is one of those. You may be one of hundreds of thousands who have such a loving family that they already know and are just waiting for you to share who you are so that they can support you and have your back when the world goes awry. This is my story. It isn't as tragic as some. I made my own choices that led to some not so good results, but I was lucky enough to have a strong support system in the end. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Your story will only add to the beautiful fabric of who we are as a society and a species. I don't mean just us in the LGBTQ plus community. I mean the entire population of the world. While our community stands under the pride flag, our entire race, the human race, is colorful and not at all as homogenous as some would like us to believe. Our bits of the tapestry add the sparkle of life to the tapestry of humanity. I'll get on with it now. The first thing I'll tell you is that I knew from a very young age who I was attracted to. I crushed on Johnny Whitaker from Family Affair, Chris Partridge from the Partridge Family, Rodney Allen Rippey from Julia, and Peter Brady from the Brady Bunch. I also sort of crushed on Greg Brady, but Peter was always my favorite. As I got older, Sean Cassidy from the Hardy Boys and Andy Gibb were two huge crushes. As a child of five, six, and seven, I wanted to kiss those boys. I thought they were really pretty. In the sixth grade, we went to what was called outdoor school. It was a campus in the woods that we spent a week in cabins and did nature walks, etc. There were some high school students who were our counselors and stayed with us in our cabins. I saw our counselor as he came out of the shower. It was accidental and purely innocent, but I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> I have to interject here too that at 11 I was baptized in the LDS church. So, the last thing I wanted was to be gay. I wanted to be a good Mormon. I wanted to go on a mission and get married in the temple and have a family. But I also crushed on the missionaries who came to our house to give me the lessons. All through grade school and into junior high, I was teased and somewhat bullied for, yep, being gay. In high school, it still happened a little bit, but not as much. I had a group of friends, and I sort of came out to them all. They, of course, already knew. One of them asked me one night to spend the weekend with him, and we experimented a little bit, and I was so torn up because I enjoyed it, but I felt as though I was going to go straight to hell, and I'd never, ever be good enough. I was old enough to go to the temple for baptisms for the dead in Oakland, California. I had an interview with my bishop, and 
He asked me if I masturbated, how much I masturbated, and what I thought about while I was doing it, which frankly is pretty creepy for a grown man to ask a 14-year-old boy those types of questions. I was honest. I told him my fantasies revolved around a couple of my classmates and, of course, Sean Cassidy and Andy Gibb. I did get to go to the temple, but I had to be accountable to the bishop. I had to not play with myself or think of dudes for a month before the trip. I was 14 for fuck's sake, so I lied. Let's jump ahead. After graduation, I went into the Navy as a hospital corpsman. Now, with my closest friends, I was out. They loved me and protected me. To my LDS friends, I played straight, and they didn't know my dirty, gay secret. I lied about my homosexuality to the Navy. I took boot camp in RTC San Diego and core school at Balboa Park Hospital just blocks away from the San Diego Zoo. And I found the gay ghetto of San Diego in a very little bit of time. I often left base to go to the zoo, then out for drinks. Gay bars at the time were rarely worried about checking ID, especially from military personnel. I was sent to Naval Air Base in Jacksonville, Florida after core school, and I was so happy to be working in the newborn nursery. I won't go into all the ins and outs, but first, um, while I was there, I was raped by a friend of mine and never reported it. He was stronger than I and overpowered me fairly easily. Second, another friend was discharged just three months into our being there um, for medical reasons. Third, while he was processing out, he outed every gay man he knew, and he knew a few of us. Sadly, many of them through me. I was subsequently discharged with an honorable under less than honorable conditions, DD-214. I came back home in disgrace, at least that's how my birth vessel put it. I brought shame on the family. Not because I'm gay, but because I flaunted it so much that the Navy had to do something about me. I bounced around town, lost for a while. I tried to get into relationships only to have my heart broken a few times. I left the LDS church at, and at 21, I met some evangelical Christians while doing an Easter play for a community theater. Well, long story short, I got saved I became a fundamentalist Pentecostal, and I had to leave the old Tim behind and be what God had planned for me, a straight man with a family, and serve the Lord with all my heart, mind, and soul. I got married to a woman who was 17 years my senior, and we married against the wishes of our pastor and to the horror of many. She had three children and a grandson from her marriage to a man who died earlier that year from a heart attack. We were blessed with the most beautiful girl in the world who is now the most beautiful woman I know, and I couldn't be more proud. I was cast in a huge summer outdoor production of The Passion, and we moved to Tacoma, Puyallup area of Washington. Shortly thereafter, I found an ex-gay ministry and began to attend group meetings. Imagine AA, but talking about same-sex attractions instead of desiring booze. I soon became a leader and even talked on the radio and entered debates with gay-friendly Christians in public forums. I spoke out at a coming out of homosexuality rally in Pioneer Square in Seattle. But I was also cheating. I found places where I could hook up anonymously. Eventually, I confessed to my wife, and we tried for a couple of years to make it work. However, I destroyed any sort of trust and broke our marriage into pieces. I had to come to terms with the fact that I was not changing. I came to understand that reparative therapy doesn't work 
because sexuality doesn't need to be repaired. Whether you're straight, gay, bi, pan, or any other label on the sexuality spectrum, you don't need repaired. It is simply who you are. I told her that we needed to divorce and I needed to come out and tell people that God cannot, does not, and will not change a person's sexuality. That was 17 years ago. I have been out and proud since. I've fought for Washington State's Marriage Equality Referendum 74 in 2012. I rejoiced in 2015 when the Supreme Court made its ruling in Obergefell and Hodges. I was pleased that President Obama rejected DADT, Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and made it clear that our military can serve out and proud. I have seen the downside as well. The fact that we still have transgender women tortured and killed in our nation rips me apart inside. We are still buttressed by homophobia, transphobia, and ignorance on a daily basis. There are many horrific policies and legislation out there that are against us being able to express and experience the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For now, thanks for watching, fellow nerds. Happy holidays, and may you have an awesome new year.